Welcome to the fourth session of Biology Crash Course. In this module, we will be learning about three parts of elementary canal, namely pharynx, esophagus and stomach. First, let us begin with pharynx. The shape of pharynx is funnel shaped and it is a muscular passage which is common for both the respiratory and digestive system. The buccal cavity, it leads to the pharynx. In the same way, the nasal cavity, which is situated above the buccal cavity, it also opens into the pharynx. So the pharynx is a common opening for the nasal cavity as well as the buccal cavity. And the pharynx then opens into the esophagus, which opens into the digestive system and trachea which leads to the respiratory system. The opening of the pharynx into the trachea is called as glottis. See this is the glottis region. This is the nasal cavity and this is the buccal cavity and both these opens into the pharynx and from here the pharynx opens into the esophagus as well as trachea and the opening of the pharynx into the trachea is called as glottis. In order to prevent the food from entering into the trachea, the glottis that is the opening of the trachea is closed by a flap like cover and this is called as epiglottis. So the cartilaginous flap of skin called epiglottis it covers the glottis which is the opening of the trachea to prevent the entry of food into the trachea while we are swallowing food next part is the esophagus the esophagus is a long muscular tube and its length is about 30 centimeters in length and it connects the pharynx with the stomach. You can see the pharynx is connected to the stomach by means of a long tube called as esophagus. This esophagus, it passes down the neck, the thorax, thorax means the chest cavity and then pierces the diaphragm. It passes down the diaphragm. We know diaphragm, we have studied in class 10. It is a muscular partition which separates the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity and thus it connects the pharynx to the stomach. The esophagus is not involved in digestion. It only helps to pass the food from the buccal cavity via the pharynx to the stomach. The wave like contraction and relaxation of the muscular wall of esophagus is called as peristalsis. Peristalsis means the moment of the food or the food bolus which we so swallow from the buccal cavity in the form of a ball and that is called as the bolus. The bolus passes down the esophagus by means of the contraction and relaxation of the muscular wall and this contraction and relaxation of the muscular wall is called as peristalsis. And because of this peristaltic moment, the food reaches the stomach through the esophagus. This is the food bolus and these are the walls of the esophagus and it undergoes contraction. See when the food, this is undergoing contraction and this part is undergoing relaxation. And again, when this is undergoing contraction, it moves the food bolus just to the next region and again the contraction and relaxation of this region moves the food bolus to the region below and thus food reaches the stomach. Next we learn about the stomach. The widest part of the elementary canal is the stomach. It is located in the upper left region of the abdominal cavity and it is a large muscular bag which is situated below the diaphragm and the shape is around C-shaped. It is about C-shaped. The stomach or the C-shaped muscular bag is divided into three regions. 
fundus, cardiac and pylorus. It is divided into fundus, cardiac and pylorus. The first region is fundus. It is situated above the cardiac region. This is a fundus, and this is the cardiac and this is a pyloric region. We can see the fundus is situated above the cardiac region. And it helps to temporarily store the air which has entered the stomach while we are swallowing the food. So it fills the air. It is filled with air. And the esophagus opens into the fundus. We can see the esophagus which has opened into the fundus region. The cardiac is the middle region where the food is mainly stored. And the last region of the stomach is called as pylorus. It is a posterior narrow region and this pylorus, it leads into the small intestine through an opening and this opening is called as pyloric orifice. This opening pyloric orifice is guarded by a ring shaped muscle called as pyloric sphincter. Sphincter is a muscle which is ring shaped. So this pyloric orifice which is guarded by pyloric sphincter, it regulates the movement of the food from the small stomach to the small intestine. And when this pyloric sphincter muscle, it relaxes, the food material passes from the stomach into the small intestine. The wall of the stomach is called as the mucous membrane. The innermost membrane is called as mucous membrane. And this mucous membrane, it is having, it's having a large number of gastric glands. And the function of these glands is to secrete the gastric juices. And the gastric juices helps in the biochemical digestion, which is taking place with the help of enzymes. And when the stomach is empty, when there is no food present in the stomach, the mucous membrane, it forms or it throws into the lumen of the stomach in the form of many numerous foldings and these foldings are called as ragi. So we can see the ragi which are the numerous foldings which is formed from by the mucous membrane and it projects into the lumen of the stomach. So dear children, in this module we learnt about pharynx which is a common opening for the nasal cavity and the buccal cavity and it leads into esophagus and the trachea. And the connection between the pharynx and the stomach is done with the help of esophagus, which helps to move the food from the pharynx to the stomach by peristalsis. And the stomach is a storage sac, which is divided into fundus, cardiac and pylorus. And the movement of the food from the stomach to the small intestine is regulated by a pyloric sphincter. Thank you.